When I first went to like, primary school, it was like nursery or whatever, and you put your job description down, I had, you know, rugby player from that age, and it's like, it's probably from him just trying to back it up. My mum like, did a lot of sports, but um, it was never rugby, rugby. I just, as a kid, liked playing loads of sports and happened to stick at rugby because all my mates did, and I just enjoy coming in. And like, as a kid, I got brought here by a couple of my mates, they had season tickets, so I'd come here, watch games. I've been playing since I was about six, five or six. So, 25 years, professionally 13. Started when I was 18, straight out of school. So, uh, my brother, so my dad took my brother to Timworth Rugby Club. I think it was like, he must have been under, I don't know, like under six. So I must have been five, four, just like rocking around there. I would not be playing, but I'd be involved with it. And um, I think I started playing, oh, I must have been just like near the under eights, nines, like through the age groups I did play, because uh, all my mates did. So I just enjoyed playing sport. Did um, Our school wasn't really rugby orientated. Like it didn't have push rugby a lot like the private schools do, I suppose. But um, like we would, get some rugby games and I'd play a lot there but Timworth Rugby Club was my main like place I played at like age groups coming through. I was in the the EPDG for Bath and Bristol during sixth form. Bristol was still in the championship so I made the business decision to go to Bath. Worked out pretty well. I actually joined as a centre, outside centre at Bath, but uh, didn't really have any wingers. So stayed on the wing, made a career out of it, joined Chiefs in 2015. Been there ever since. But that's where my old man played. He played scrum half as well. Um, obviously played a bit of 10, and it's like that's what I'm doing as well at the minute. I mean, with uni. Played nine and ten. Um, I don't know really. It quite feels like you, you've always involved with the game at nine. You're always having to make the pass, make you know, go to each breakdown, and always feel a bit about it. So that's probably why. This year we've had all sorts of different time kickoffs. Early 12.30, 5 p.m., normal 3 p.m., evening games, Sunday games, lots of Sunday games. Um, so it's quite quite difficult changing every week, but if you get your, I think that kind of three hours before kickoff, you keep the same. Then the meal the night before, you keep the same. You get into a routine, you're quite disciplined with it. I think you can kind of start to build an energy, start to build a the same mindset before before you take the field every time. I like just listen to music before a game or like the game day. I'll just like not do anything. I'll just chill and relax. If it's a late kickoff, I'll put like a film on, um, some YouTube and just when I get there, listen to music. And then until I suppose I've had to work on it a bit, but like until the actual game is kicking off, that's when I start locking into the game. Uh, focusing on, uh, obviously I've got all the information I need, but I don't need to overthink, or, like, overthink that all, so I just try and enjoy rugby for what it is. I've played quite a bit of FIFA, watch some golf on uh, YouTube, and uh, but yeah, I try my best just to relax and not really think too much about it until like an hour before coming. But at the minute, obviously with my, I obviously recently dislocated the shoulder, I have to come in Obviously, roll out, stretch out the lowers, and then it's quite quickly into a bit of catching with the shoulder, a bit of cuff work, um, just trying to get it all activated, firing around there. But, um, then straight up to that, it's obviously strapping, uh, sets on the wrist, and then 
into their team meetings and what have you. I had a really big breakfast. It was actually, I actually did enjoy it because I got to really enjoy my breakfast, really had a nice big lunch and I didn't feel like I'd be blurred before the game. Sometimes, I think the 3 p.m. kickoffs, uh, you don't know where, how to manage it because you're playing at lunchtime, so you would come off the field starving or you come off the f you eat just before and feel bloated, but five o'clock I think is quite a good time for me. Well, uh, well, before the game, I feel like we as a team had an idea of what we were going to do and obviously we uh, going through that whole week with the whole don't mind if we win or lose, we'd want this performance. And yeah, as the team came together, we kind of set our eyes on that performance and we thought, if we get there, we're gonna get the result that we want. And it kind of just, just unfolded from there, really. Personally, I've, I've been in that position before. I've lost a lot of games. Won a lot of games, we lost a lot of games in the Prem. Um, different competition, different motivations. So, And then I think with losses, you start to learn there's a lot to pick up in losses. Like sometimes they're more valuable than, than wins, because wins you can glaze over some mistakes. Losses, you really have to focus. And since then, we've learned a lot. Uh, it's quite character building, those sort of losses, if you can bounce back. Um, and over the years, Exeter Chiefs, uh, me being part of this team, we've been really good at losing in the in, in the best way possible. In that we look at it, um, we look at the game from a very analytic analytical point of view. We're very competitive, so we don't want to keep having back to back uh, losses. And I think we've avoided that. I think the Quins and Bath game being back to back drummings was a, very unfortunate, but there's still so much to play for in this season. I think that Prem Cup was a big lift and then the European Cup's a massive lift. So we've had motivation and I think we just need the discipline to keep it going now. As soon as I get out there, I just try and enjoy it. I mean, I think you don't want to get bogged down and there's only so much you know you can do in the game anyway. So you may as well go out, enjoy it, and uh, try to play like you want to, you know, how you want to show to the fans, really. Obviously Beck starting had a really good start to the game. He put pressure on them, speed of ball was good, and I think we go into the game with the knowledge we've provided from the coaches, what we've like, analysed. So we have similar processes to what we need to add to the game. <clears throat> but we obviously want to provide our own sort of style. We, we're, we're different players and play differently. But I think we do go in with similar aspects of the like, thought process to the game. Like, obviously it's more to the end of the game. <clears throat> I know bodies are getting tired, so I'm going to want to speed the ball up as much as I can. and. Obviously, I like to focus on that. He might ask uh, to start the game. He might a bit more control, but at the same time, we're wanting the same thing. We just may come across differently in the way we play it because we're, or like I say, different players. But I think uh, as that position is a very similar role, but as stages through the game, as momentum changes or the time goes on, you're able to pick up different things, uh, tired bodies or like momentum swings in the game, so you just got to be aware of how you play. When we're, when we're in that cup kit, that pink kit, we're flying. Don't know what it is about that kit. Um, it's weird. It's never the, the season never felt. It feels like it at the moment, but it just kept like slipping through our fingers. When in previous seasons we just we just rolled and we just had this confidence, and 
I don't know, winning became a habit this season. It's hard. I don't think it'll be, we'll be able to put a finger on it until after, until re we can retrospectively look at the season as a whole and one went well, one went wrong. But at the moment, we're very together as a squad. Coaches and players are quite unified and you can definitely feel that and see that in our performances. So, exciting. Yeah, you know, I've watched most of these boys play for most of their career, really, and it's like, yeah, getting to play with them now is is different. Feels weird. Still have to pinch myself every day when I wake up, sort of thing. But yeah. That was called just before the line I went in because that was called on the fly. We we ran that play the week before and I, we weren't really supposed to, it wasn't really in our game plan, but Joe Joe saw they didn't have a tail gunner, so called that play. And um, I think you could see that they weren't ready. Even the, I don't think that on t I watched it back on TV, even the TV was speaking about something else and the ball's already in the air. Spilt one against Harlequins. Oh, Um, and that actually helped me because I was kind of, kind of got my timing because I was sitting there waiting for just waiting for the call. The call went in. I all kind of ran onto the ball, had a really good run up and up, and Sean just hit it really, really timed it really well. I like, literally passed it as he got hit. Um, I had to tie a head inside me, um, and I had a head start on him, so it kind of got got a bit um, distance between us. And then um, yeah, just had that one guy to beat. I was I was gunning it for the try line. Realised he was quite a quick boy covering that backfield so his inside shoulder I just uh, took the option and uh, dotted it down and then three tries up a big celebration for 20-30 minutes in but uh, just just had a feeling that we had it from there. We're kind of jogging back in, and it's like you do get that feel, but then it's straight away in the change room. Right, like we got we got to finish the job now. You know, it's half done. So. So I suppose like going in half time, boys were very confident, and I think like it's easy for us to like go in and then with that score line, it's easy to sort of drop off a little bit. Players are, oh, we're, we're there, but we didn't. And I think that that makes it easier for a scrum half because it shows that you're willing to work for the ball to be sped up. Like, if I'm there and they're not there, then we're not going to be playing the way we want to be playing with expansive rugby, trying to get from the outside. And I think the boys really, like some boys who played the whole game, like getting off the floor, their work to get into the shape was like, outstanding. It made me <laughs> hopefully look better, but. Like the speed of ball is good and that's all you can ask for from a scrum half, like clean service and putting them on the front foot, hopefully. I think the, the moment for me was we went in 21-0 at halftime and then we scored first after halftime and I think that was the biggest, uh, the most important score of the day. <laughs> It feels good at nine because you're always, you're normally one of the first to be over the line with the try score anyway, because it's always that support line. So it does feel good when uh, 
obviously they've scored a try, they're obviously jumping on them and uh, or as jani has been doing, trying to rugby tackle people. I mean, I used to watch like the, some of the, those Saffa boys when I was younger. I remember watching, I think it was a 15 films as a kid, like some of his highlights, stepping people, and I was just like, oh my God, like that is sick. And then watching him play for the Springboks as well as Herschel Yankees, like, I was like, I'm actually gonna go play against it. This is pretty like, nuts. I feel like I have earned a little bit of it, but there's still obviously that week in, week out, you've got to still perform to obviously keep keep your name in the hat and keep it like getting pulled out sort of thing. You can't just have a good game and then, you know, go, oh, that's it, I've earned my spot. You've got to keep on, keep on sort of, yeah, that's what my dad always constantly reminds me of. He's like, that game's gone now, you know, you've got to go out and do it again. That's that, so, but that's what, I, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Anyway. just prove to ourselves how good we can be. And that desire from the boys is just, of putting everything out there has really pushed us to a new level, I think. Going onwards as to who will win it this season. Europe is ending here for them. And, uh, Joe Simmons gives it away to Woodburn, and Woodburn pops it up, and the try is scored by Tom Cairns. I was knackered at that point. Um, just wanted the game to end, but uh, we uh, we chatted that through quite well. We 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 knew that they they just want to run, chuck it about. Um, so we put we put 14 in the front line and left the backfield. And was like, if you want to kick it, you can kick it, but. Um, you're going to have to go through us if you want to carry the ball. Which meant Joe came up on the end, managed to get the offload. He didn't think Joe would be there. When I caught it, again, uh, I forget his name, but the wing was very quick, came across and hit me. Actually, I was a bit annoyed I didn't score the first time, but then, um, yeah, I just, I knew we'd have, we have a lot of boys on our feet around us, so just kept the ball alive and popped up to Kenzie for his try. I think he was really happy he got that after getting charged down, so. <laughs> and I saw him throw a float over, and I was like, oh. Saw Joe come in and intercept it. Saw Woody at the inside line, and I went to follow Woody, because I thought he was running over. <laughs> and then uh, Winger comes out of nowhere, tackles Woody, and I was, was like, oh, it's me, it's me. Like, pass the ball, pass the ball, and then over. Like, one of the <laughs> easiest but best moments in my rugby career, I reckon. So I can. <laughs> Obviously, thank Woody now for that lift, but... but um, Europe is ending here for them. And, uh, Joe Simmons gives it away to Woodburn, and Woodburn pops it up, and the try is scored by Tom Cairns. Confirmed, beyond doubt, beyond debate, Exeter Chiefs, Champions Cup semi-finalists. I mean, yeah, I could have gone under the post, but I saw the full back, so I was like, don't make any mistakes, just put the ball down. In like one of the photos, I'm holding on so tight, you can see I'm like that. <laughs> the rugby side of it, I feel like my achievement like here is all I, like, I've wanted to do as a kid. So that last moment, I was just like, it couldn't have ended better for, for me personally. Like, obviously, I just wanted to make an impact on the game and <clears throat> bring what I had. So I don't know, it was perfect for me, perfect. <laughs>